Thanks for starting your week with us. Hello, I'm Lee Jun in Seoul. Coming up on today's Business Daily. Korea unveils a $90 million drone, the TR-60, that can fly twice as fast as a helicopter. And we take a closer look at South America and potential business opportunities for Korea and the region. Producer prices in Korea have plunged in March, hitting the lowest levels in more than four years. The Bank of Korea says the producer price index fell 0.1 percent back on the trend of decline it has seen consistently throughout the latter half of last year. The central bank added that producer prices experienced a slight rebound in February on the back of Lunar New Year sales, but fell again in March due to a steep drop in gas service costs. Compared to the same period last year, the index fell 3.7 percent. Foreign investors have been pumping cash into Korea's bourses, and according to figures from the Korea Exchange, they now hold about 30 percent of the total value. The market capitalization of foreign-held stocks on both the Kospi and Kosdaq indices came to $430 billion as of Thursday's close. That's a surge of nearly $40.6 billion from the end of last year, but a slight dip in proportion due to foreign investors trading off more large-cap shares for small caps. The amount of electricity produced from nuclear power plants in Korea has surpassed 3 trillion kilowatt hours since the first reactor started operation nearly four decades ago. Now, 3 trillion kilowatt hours is equivalent to the amount of electricity that the entire country consumes in six years and three months. It's also what the entire global population uses in roughly six weeks. With a total of 23 nuclear reactors in operation as of now, the country plans to increase its total nuclear capacity by twofold in the next two decades. Japanese financial companies are turning their eyes to Korea, pivoting away from an already saturated market at home. And there are now concerns that too much capital might, might be flowing into private loans and savings banks, sectors that are heavily used by low-income households here in Korea. Our Eunice Kim has the story. For those working unstable, low-paying jobs in Korea, it's tough to get a loan at a bank. You'll need a good credit score, a steady stream of income, or collateral like property. So many turn to the non-banking sector for private loans, even if it means dealing with interest rates of up to 35 percent, sky high compared to those offered at commercial banks. And this is the market that an influx of Japanese capital is aggressively seeking at a fast pace. Borrowed at near zero rates in Japan thanks to the country's monetary easing, private loan firms can make a quick buck loaning cash to the destitute over in Korea. Data submitted to the National Assembly by Korea's financial watchdog showed the aggregate assets of Japan's top four private moneylenders had more than 40 percent of the market share, APRO Financial and Sanwa Money with the largest chunks. Welcome Loan, Korea's biggest player, only owns 7 percent, showing the dominance of Japanese lenders. But it doesn't end there. Japanese capital is also spreading into the savings bank sector. Assets of the top five Japanese companies make up nearly 20 percent of the $35 billion industry. The largest lender, SBI Savings Bank, had 10 percent of the total market share. Experts and government leaders are sounding the alarm, warning Japanese companies are less likely to consider Seoul's financial guidelines or the public interest in their run for profit. They're also calling for more regulations to protect local customers from being stampeded by foreign loan companies, countering a rise in defaults and the country's ballooning household debt. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. The demand for military and civilian drones seems to be surging in the 21st century. They're becoming more popular for their ability to fly through places that might be out of reach for humans and conduct tasks that might be too dangerous to send personnel into. Stepping into this market of much more potential, Korea recently showcased a new drone model. Here's our Lee Ji Young with more. This unmanned aerial vehicle, called a tilt rotor with the name of TR-60, 
has the ability to take off and land vertically like a helicopter while flying like an airplane. Able to stay up in the air for up to six hours, it can reach a maximum 500 kilometers per hour in speed, the fastest in the world. Korea Aerospace Research Institute recently unveiled this UAV, in which it poured in roughly 91 million U.S. dollars. Its goal is to complete development by 2023 and officially start mass production the following year. Operating in the stratosphere, this drone can be used effectively for various purposes, including surveillance, search and rescue, aerial reconnaissance, transportation and communication relays. Korea's current drone technology is set to be at seventh in the world, but by 2023, we aim to be in the top five and climb to third or fourth by 2027. The global drone market was estimated to be around 5.3 billion U.S. dollars in size last year, but industry analysts expect the figures to more than double in eight years. Korea's drone market is also projected to grow swiftly, picking up approximately 22 percent in growth yearly to reach a market size of up to $525 million by 2022. But with global tech companies like Google and Facebook also jumping in on drone development, Korea will face stiff competition in better positioning itself in the UAV market. Lee ju -young, Business Daily. Currently, President Park Geun-hye is on a four-nation trip to South America, a continent full of opportunities, especially in the field of business and trade. To tell us more, we're now joined by our Song Ji-san in the studio. Morning, Ji-san. Morning, Ji-yoon. All right, so tell us a little bit about this region and why it's an, a, an area full of opportunities in business and trade. Well, South America is best known for its natural resources, which will supply a lot portion of the global demand. But it's also a great potential for business and trade with a potential customer of 600 million people of the population. And President Park is visiting four countries during her visit this month, which include Colombia, Peru, Chile and Brazil. Now, Chile was the first country to sign a free trade deal with Korea, which went into effect in 2004. It is the world's biggest producer of copper, supplying one-third of the global demand. Peru is another country to have sealed a free trade deal with Korea, which is also well known it's for mining resources. And Brazil has grown into the world's eighth largest country in terms of GDP, since it was named one of the four BRICS nations by Goldman Sachs more than a dozen years ago, along with Russia, India and China. So it should come as a no surprise that the delegation of business people traveling with the president is the biggest of its kind, including executives from the large companies as well as small and mid-sized companies. Well, Susan, if I remember correctly, you have experience working there in the region. In your opinion, how have Korean companies performed there? Well, I lived and worked there as a regional analyst, and you should also know that uh, Korea and South America are the farthest distance separated by at least 24 hours of flight, and that is a hurdle for businessmen approaching the continent. But uh, Korean companies were very prompt to uh, target and enter the market in various areas. For example, electronics giants like Samsung and LG have established production and facilities in Manaus, which is an industrial city in the Amazon area, producing everything from display panels to mobile phones, and the two are also leading the continent in terms of preference and market share in consumer goods ranging from TVs and washing machines. Now, Hyundai Motor also has a plant with an annual production of 180,000 units, which also include a Brazil-specific model, which is called HB20. All right. Well, it looks like Korean companies stuck to the principles of localization and customization. OK, moving on. There must be challenges that Korean firms face there as they try to enter the market. What's your opinion on that? 
Well, for Samsung and LG, they have set their plans in Manaus, but because that was a free trade zone where they can get um, tax benefits, along with a, a lot of benefits, but that's one of the hurdles facing uh, Korean businessmen who are trying to make their investment in Brazil because there's a, something called Brazil cost. That means um, setting up a business could be uh, take much longer than expected as there are um, a lot of local regulations that are very strict and tax issues, and there's a lot of lack of infrastructure in rural areas in particular that could um, actually slow things down in terms of progress. So according to a survey by the Institute of Latin St American Studies at the Seoul National University, Korean executives have also said that another hurdle is a competition with the Chinese products as Korean products are priced expensive than the cheaper Chinese products and that's actually reducing their market share in the terms of global market and uh, the market share in this continent. Well then what are some ways that we can boost bilateral trade between Korea and the countries that President Bok is currently visiting? Well one sure thing is the free trade agreements between the South American countries and as because we're separated by the great distance in time and that um, uh, free trade deal could actually um, narrow the gap between the two parties. So actually Korea and Chile, which have signed the free trade deal in 2004, that have actually expanded Chile's share in terms of a wine market as it has become the second biggest wine exporter to Korea in 2004. And one of the reasons for President Park's visit to Colombia was also to encourage her counterpart to expedite the approval of the bilateral trade pact, which is under ratification process in Colombia. Now, Seoul is also pursuing more free trade deals to uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership or negotiations through the Mercosur, uh, Mercosur Bloc, which includes Brazil, Argentina, but there haven't been concrete progress in either channels just yet. And experts also say South America's abundant reserves of the natural resources, which could be coupled with Korea's advanced technologies in ICT and infrastructure, could actually create a very great synergy effect when the two parties in, uh, enhance their cooperation in business and trade. All right. Well, hopefully President Bao will be able to achieve all those goals while she's there. Thanks for coming in today, ji -san. Thanks for having me. That wraps it up for now, but we'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place. Until then, bye-bye.